Hi, my name is Esther, pronouns she, her. And I'm Divi, pronouns she, they. And this is our podcast, Spirits Rising, where we question everything we've been taught about faith. Listen to our unfiltered discussions with awesome guests as we explore liberating spiritualities true to our experiences. Today we are doing a very special live episode of Spirits Rising um, from SCM's 100th anniversary online celebration. Um, I'm going to get everyone on screen for a moment and invite you to say hi. Lovely to see all your faces. My video doesn't work. <laughs> I totally missed that. <laughs> Their video doesn't work, but it's okay because now we have your voice there. For the yes. <sighs> yes, hello. Okay. So for... Oops. Here we go. So for this wonderful alumni panel episode. Um, our, our first guest will be the amazing Lois Wilson, who has been involved with the SC, SCM and World Student Christian Federation since 1943. She is a United Church minister, past president of the Canadian Council of Churches and World Council of Churches, and the first woman to be moderator of the United Church in Canada. Among many other accomplishments, you can read her Wikipedia page. She is the author of Turning the World Upside Down, a memoir, and I Want to Be in That Number, Cool Saints I Have Known. And another guest we have today is Joy Kennedy. So they're an SCM member from the late 1960s, now on the board of the Student Christian Movement at York. She has been Ecological Justice Staff for the Anglican Church of Canada, Kairos Canada, United Church of Canada, and the Canadian Council of Churches. She continues to be deeply involved in faith and eco-justice initiatives at the national and international level, particularly with Climate Action Network Canada and the World Council of Churches. Our third guest is Hiren Kim Craig, who is graduate degree director and professor of preaching at Emmanuel College, U of T. Her teaching and research address a range of topics related to biblical interpretation, post-colonial theories, feminist homiletics and liturgy, migration and decolonizing practices. The most recent of her many books is Post-Colonial Preaching, soon to be published. She has been involved with the SCM in Korea and in Canada. And lastly, we have my friend Elliot Gunn. Elliot is a UFT graduate and member of SCM at Ryerson currently. He works as a data scientist and was previously a volunteer with the breakfast program at the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields, Toronto. He co-facilitates the discipleship group at First Lutheran as well. Thank you. So pleased to have you all here. Oh, our first our first interview question is, um, what stands out in your memory of the political and religious climate at the time you became involved with SCM? Oh, Lois, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, well, in the religious climate, the churches were plodding along as usual. Uh, in the SCM, we were part of the SVM, Student Volunteer Movement in the States, and they turned out to be very evangelical and their theme was, uh, we're going to convert the world in this generation. They, and so they were going to send missionaries all over the world and convert everybody. And the Canadians rebelled and said, that isn't our idea of what should happen. And so it was in 1921 that we split from them and, and the Canadian SCM was formed. Um, so that was, that was um, the other thing. I went to the quadrennial SCM. We used to have those 
and it was meeting in Des Moines, I remember, and John R. Mott spoke to us, and he was a great proponent of saving the world, you know, sending everybody out. And the students organized an all prayer, an all prayer, an all night prayer vigil, like every night you had to step praying. That turned me off completely. I was not in sympathy with that nonsense. So uh, that was the religious climate. The other part of it was we had student Christian movement secretaries, that is staff people who came to us. And the one I particularly remember was K.H. Ding from China, who came as the mission secretary to the SCM. And that was a new concept that they should come to us and not us to them. And I remember him saying, I want you to all remember that you're the salt of the earth. You're not, you're not the whole student. So don't get confused. Don't talk about growth, but talk about giving flavor to the, to the existing thing. So that was the religious uh, climate. The political climate, it was during World War II. And I remember Ted Scott, the later Ang Anglican Prima of Canada, was our FCM secretary. And he mobilized us to protest against the government who was interning all the Japanese from the, Japanese Canadians from the West Coast into um, Central Canada. And that was my first political action on human rights. And that stayed with me my entire life so that I was active in human rights uh, um, around uh, South Korea and its struggle for democracy, Chile against Pinochet, uh, Argentina against the military junta there. And um, that, that went on and on. And I discovered that much of the, uh, and South Africa too, and much of the uh, support for human rights in those political situations was due to SCM people from around the world which was very heartening. So I learned both religiously and politically from the SCM. Thank you there so no, much. The other thing to say is there was practically no interfaith. There was no understanding of that at all. Hmm. Thanks. Oh, it's so so great to, to hear about the, the campaign um, against the internment of Japanese Canadians, because that's something that until now I've I've only seen as, you know, a line in some of our literature. That's great. Yeah. Um, Joy, I would love to hear from you because I have heard you allude to having joined the SCM in 1967, and that was a very exciting time. Yeah, it sure was. Um, it's funny, uh, right now I'm looking forward to my 50th graduating uh, reunion <laughs> next month. And so that's half a century, I guess. Uh, um, but yeah, I. I was studying religious studies at Trinity College, actually, and I was attracted to the M in SCM. It was a movement. It, was, it wasn't an organization. I'd been part of organizations, and I didn't want to be anymore. I wanted to be part of a movement, and it was the right time for that because um, it really was a time of uh, cultural and political and religious foment, I think. Um, you know, feminism, we were really ramping up in 1967, 8, 9, um, anti-war uh, movement, especially the Vietnam War, um, liberation movements everywhere uh, in um, what we called then third world countries, can you believe it? Um, and um, anti-oppression uh, uh, movements. And so we knew we were joining the movement towards anti-oppression and towards liberation. And, um, you know, we were becoming more aware of the international context too, I think, because the people before us, like Lois and company, um, had made uh, many connections and those connections really, um, really strengthened, I think, during the 60s and early 70s. Um, I remember the excitement of meeting Cage and Su, Su Mei Ding. It was so amazing um, because those kinds of things were starting to become part of how we analyze things in a global village now. Um, and so under, uh, let me see, Eilert Frerich, some of you may have known, uh, United Church Minister Eilert, was, uh, he was kind of the chaplain. And we had a great secretary called Irene, I can't remember her last name, but she had red hair, I remember. <laughs> um, but they organized opportunities for us to really engage. So we would do Bible study cum political uh, analysis cum, um, you know, just sort of social economic analysis as well, and, um, and then engage. And so 
but we also worked away at our, our spiritual um, uh, health, I guess. We, for example, something, I don't know if anybody else ever did this, but we used to have um, Easter vigils in Queens Park where we'd stay up all night in the park. And I was always up in a tree because there were a lot of unseemly characters around Queens Park overnight. And uh, so I used to spend very cold nights up in the tree. And then at dawn, we would have Eucharist celebrated by Bishop Wilkinson. Wilkerson. Um, and then we'd all go for a champagne breakfast back to Irene's place. <laughs> so those were, those were great moments, spiritually uplifting, shall we say. <laughs> um, but one of the main things that I remember um, that we engaged was in 1969, when the Canadian Council of Churches was holding an assembly in Montreal. It was a big deal. And we SCMers were asked uh, to go and do kind of a pre-assembly using the inner city as a laboratory for a social, economic, political immersion experience for the delegates. And my assigned group included a Lutheran bishop, a Salvation Army captain, and a newly minted bishop uh, from Kootenai, who I didn't know at the time, was Ted Scott, who became the Anglican primate. And we dragged them all over <laughs> to, you know, social justice organizations, housing um, um, organizations, food banks. And interestingly, um, took my group into the FLQ offices to talk about uh, the liberation of Quebec. And so there we were in the office talking with the uh, FLQ uh, um, leaders uh, about what was going on. And of course, it was a year later that the, the FLQ crisis happened and uh, um, Canada went into a lockdown, bigger lockdown uh, than we're in today, I guess. Anyway, um, it was it was a time for us to make an impact on who we thought were the established church at, gathered in Montreal. And, you know, we engaged that assembly uh, from the point of view of youth and made um, solidarity with things, groups like the Canadian Black Coalition. So we were working away at intersectionality even in those days. And um, we thought we were radical because we pushed, we made a, a Tower of Babel of all of the documents that they had created for that assembly. And then we pushed it all over, you know, and said, you know, put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. Anyway, um, there are lots of fun stories from those times, but that's just a little bit of, of uh, what we were up to in those days. Thanks so much, Joy. Um, I'll invite um, Hiran to share. Um, I, I know very little about your <laughs> SCM story, so I'm really keen to hear about it. Great, thank you. Thank you for inviting uh, for this amazing historical event. Um, I guess I'll feel um, as a, almost like a, a new friend to uh, Canada SCM, but uh, I was heavily involved in Korean Student Christian Federation. Um, during my undergrad studies in the eight, late 90s and early 1990s. Um, KSCF, we call it, uh, or SSCM was uh, really heavily involved in democratization and peace movement during yeah. that time. So I remember still so vividly every weekend <laughs> we were out demonstrating. Uh, smelling tear gas was a yeah. part of what SCM does. Um, being arrested by the police was the normal thing to do to be followers of Jesus. Um, often people ask me what my undergrad major was, and I often say, oh, SCM was my major. Um, we did so much things together as a group. Um, I was in a, a Seoul branch, but then we had a national group and uh, regularly we gathered and the weekly we studied I mean, the critical reading of the Bible. I think I learned that from uh, KSCF um, members. And uh, we also had um, like activists uh, from labor union as well as farmers unions. 
uh, and women's uh, strike movements groups come in and talk to us and why uh, these things matter uh, in faith. Um, so I really remember of that deep engagement of our spiritual and, and faithful life that are interconnected with our political, social uh, change. Um, one of the, you know, crazy memories, you know, I, you know, as we are all young, uh, every summer, we uh, group like over 100 people organized to go down to different rural areas and spend two weeks with farmers and learning about their uh, conditions and, and issues. Um, and uh, one of the kind of principles is that we are not supposed to wash our hair for like five days. <laughs> Uh, and, and so th there was all kinds of uh, stories, uh, you know, complaints and crying out loud. And, but then throughout those really kind of messy and, and uh, down to earth kind of work, we bonded. And, and, and so, you know, there are amazing memories. And later on, when I became a kind of senior level, um, Korean uh, student Christian movement was uh, connected with Asia Pacific, which was one of the active uh, WCF uh, groups. And we worked together as well. And, you know, Korean situation in terms of the human rights and democratization issues were close to, for example, Philippines and Taiwan and others. So we learned to listen to each other's struggles um, and kind of strategize how to make things better. Um, so all those are amazingly powerful uh, memories for me. Thanks so much, Hiran. That's, uh, yeah, that sort of connection between um, critical, um, critical Bible study and activism is something that really resonates with my own SCM experience. So that is bringing us to SCM today. And Elliot, <laughs> I would invite you to share your thoughts on S SCM and how it, in your experience, has related to the political and religious climate of this time. Definitely. Um... Uh, yeah, I've had such a radically different experience from all the uh, testimonies shared here because I joined during the pandemic. Uh, so I joined last summer. And even though I've been a member for, I think, almost eight months now, um, I have not met any of the SCM members or leaders uh, in person. So it has been a really uh, interesting change to my uh, Christian social life. Um, so I, I won't, I guess, rehash too much of what happened politically or religiously since I expect it has been um, pretty fresh in everyone's minds. We had like the Black Lives Matter movement uh, last summer. It was the final month of the Trump presidency where we all didn't know what was gonna happen next. Um, more recently, we've seen a lot of rolling back of trans rights, uh, especially in the States. But I think that it looks like there's um, more challenge globally as well. Uh, we also see a lot of that rhetoric in the UK um, and the overarching thing uh, over all of this has been a lot of uh, anti-Asian sentiment because of COVID, uh, some Sinophobia, um, a lot of questions in the air about what the US-China relations mean for the rest of the world. Um, and I guess from my vantage point, uh, SCM has provided me a sort of a framework for looking at this because uh, previously as someone who was very uh, churchless, a little rootless, um, and feeling very anxiety prone without a framework in which you can like process and make sense of what's happening um, and also provide a path forward uh, in which you can contribute. Um, I felt very hopeless, but I really appreciate SCN's long history of, um, act, of acting out their faith in a very concrete way, um, whether that's like protests or organizing uh, things that are, you see um, a lot on like student campuses, but I think like as people graduate from school or move on, they kind of lose that uh, community. Um, SCM has kind of like kept that spirit going, uh, even for people who have uh, left campus. Thank you so much, Elliot. Um, I resonate with that because I also joined SCM during a pandemic. 
Uh, so for our next question, we are curious about what you have learned from other SEMers um, during your time with SEM or perhaps during these events. And also what advice would you give to future or current SEMers like Elliot and myself? And we will start with Lois. Lois is currently muted, so you'd have to click the mute first. Thank you, that's good. Yes, you're good now. What has been uh, some of the most exciting things? Uh, for me, uh, I mean, you got to realize this was the time before we had air travel. There were no airplanes flying. And SCM was an international movement and brought people to us. And that was wonderful uh, because it opened up the world. Um, and uh, as I say, there was mutuality across the, across the board. And I discovered this later because that stayed with me all my life when I was moderator and went to visit in Argentina where there was a military junta in charge. The Mothers of May Square opposed him and they were supported by SCMers in Argentina. So the international dimensions of the movement were really important and exciting. Second thing was the biblical base. Uh, we were grounded in the Judeo-Christian tradition and uh, that meant um, rigorous questioning and debate, which one didn't get so much in the church. And that was uh, important. Uh, the other thing, it was an open movement. It was not only for believers, but also those who questioned the belief. And that was stated right up front in our, in our, um, in our purpose. So that was important. Um, but I think above all, it was the quality of the, of the community that attracted me. Um, we, had, we bought a house, it was an SEM house, and every Sunday night we would have a forum there. We sang all these crazy songs, you know, like Poisoning the Student Mind, you know. Do you know that one? Yeah. Poisoning the Student Mind. And, and uh, so singing was a great part, and we had a lot of fun. And we're quite irreverent, which I like very much. Um, in terms of um, what I learned, you want to know what I learned from other SCMers? Yeah, and any advice you'd have for current yeah. SCMers as well? Well, in my day, uh, the SCM organized work camps in the summer. So students would uh, try and, and get a job in a factory, mostly in a factory. There were also some on the prairies for sugar beet, sugar beet harvesting, but they would get their jobs and they would live together, but have their jobs separately. And so every night they would report in on what had happened in the factory that day and have a discussion about the economic and political ramifications of the gospel. Um, they also shared, their, shared all their money. So at the end of the summer, students who had great need got most of the, most of the money. And that was a learning for me in terms of, of what a community means. Um, the, uh, the struggle for human rights, of course, was, was one of the things that excited me. And as I've said before, that carried right through my life. Um, I learned from Susanna Dietrich, who was a little, she was a WSCF secretary in Geneva. And uh, she used to take students up skiing in the Alps but insisting that during the day they would do at least one hour of Bible study. And I adopted that method later. I used to take girls canoeing in Quetico Park, and, but I insisted that we'd have to do one hour of Bible study a day. And that weeded out all sorts of people it was great. <laughs> so I learned that from Suzanne. From M.M. M. Thomas uh, from South India. I mean, he, he, I learned from him that Christianity was in dialogue with communism in those days. And it can be in dialogue with other um, movements in the world. Um, Madeleine Barreau, she was another one I learned during the war years. She, I don't know how many dozen Jews she heaved over the wall to safety. Uh, she, she was an activist. And of course, Kate Sting, who taught me how the gospel is reciprocal among people. So there was a great deal to learn from, from the communities. But I think the work caps is one of the big ones. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was super interesting. Um, and next, I would like to ask Joy, uh, what is one thing that you've learned from SEM or from other SEMers, a big takeaway, as well as what advice would you give to future or current SEMers? 
I think it was expected for us that the, the, the entry question was about not questioning this, uh, to, but to question the status quo. I mean, we were, uh, we sort of were coming through the rise of the middle class and, you know, this is well, uh, I'm born just past the Second World War. So my generation, you know, everything was just supposed to be um, suburban and tied up in bows and ribbons, you know. Um, but immediately as we dug into um, scriptural analysis and, and political analysis, it was don't take anything for granted. No, and don't take any systems at face value. Um, dig deep and figure out what's really going on by talking to people who are being affected by the systems in place. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I think uh, to um, pass on is that, you know, we thought and as we sort of engaged the systems and engaged the realities around um, we thought and we believed we could change the world or at least make a difference. And it was our faith in action uh, that strengthened us. So it was faith in action always. Um, and um, I'd want that same feeling or of possibility for students today. Um, you know, it's interesting how, how that gets picked up. So I told you about the uh, FLQ crisis in November of uh, 1970 and I left the country in that November to go to India and the my first stop was in Geneva and it turns out Paulo Freire was was doing a session there with the uh, World Council of Churches and he invited me to come and be part of this discussion because he was curious about what was going on in Canada and um uh how are we dealing with a bicultural bi bilingual uh nation and education system. So we had this great exchange. I didn't quite know how to answer him because I really wasn't in that system as much as I thought. Um, but, you know, the world was also looking at us for what was going on here uh, and that there had to be more of a, an understanding built across cultural and uh, national, you know, uh, divides. And the other thing was, of course, we were exploring other religious uh, traditions as well interfaith ideas were starting to be able to be accepted uh, and, and, under, uh, and at least engaged. So keep doing that. I think the interfaith uh, connections are critical now. Um, I'll leave it there, so keep moving. Thank you so much. And Hyren? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think I, I'm going to pick up what Joey just said. Um, I learned uh, that uh, in order to, you know, in order to know that another world is possible, the another world that we we dream, um, and in a theological language we say reign of God, uh, we need to have an imagination. And uh, so I want to invite you to imagine, um, and and uh, like millions of people in one place, kind of walking. There. Shoulder to shoulder, what? singing protest songs, uh, sometimes sitting or even lying down on the asphalt on the street, looking at the sky until police try to uh, arrest us. Um, I think the being a part of that big and massive movement, uh, that experience was really exhilarating. So even if we don't have that real physical experience. You know, I, I really hope that we can imagine that, that kind of critical uh, mass. So one of the things that I learned uh, from SCM movement is to the importance of mobilizing to create a critical mass for the social change. So it's not the one person who has a brilliant idea. We, we, we got to have grassroots people upon people. Um, I learned, as I think Lois uh, mentioned similar thing, I really learned how to debate uh, social issues and, and, and Christian religious issues uh, because we were also learning as a communitarian, right? not 
hierarchical ways. I also learn about deep kind of respectful listening um, and do the critical reflections together. Um, I think those are absolutely crystallizing in this day and age where um, kind of anti uh, learning or anti critical thinking is 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 promoted uh, under the liberal um, neoliberal kind of capitalist um, notion. Um, we are not just utilitarians, right? Uh, we could think deeply and 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 imagine um, different ways of life. Um, I also learned about uh, building relationships. You know, ultimately, what saves us is the relationships. In this sense, you know, Christological, we say it's not just Jesus alone, but Christa as a community who believe in that vision of uh, Jesus Christ. So that building relationships is is such a key, and I think you know, globally as well as locally, uh, SCM, SCMers, our uh, groups did that. Um, finally, I thought um, something we want to, since we are celebrating uh, Centennial, which is remarkable, that um, really cultivating a leadership uh, is something that I think we should not forget. Something that, you know, I was always, always amazed every time I go to all kinds of ecumenical movements or Christian organizations and even beyond Christian organization, how many leaders are from SSCMs. Yeah. It's incredible. Almost yeah. every corner of the earth, uh, SSCM impacted people's leadership. Um, I think we should celebrate that. And, and uh, as Canada SSCM, having that kind of local, so always, always having the global visions for working locally, uh, contextually, you know, that matters to today in this place. I think those are, you know, really important. Um, you know, having a kind of vision, you know, I often talk about tree of life. And uh, it's, so SCM is probably the oldest uh, ecumenical movement on earth. Uh, so that means we've got a long and deep, <laughs> still having their deep roots, but branching out uh, wide and, and, and long with those who, who are having a similar vision and, and dream that, that another world is possible and rehearsing that sense of new um, world on earth here and now. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. I think even me being the general secretary now, it's so amazing that I'm getting advice from all these generations, like all in this one. So now I wanna to go to Elliot. I'm curious, cause you're still in it. What are you learning, I guess, right now from SCMers and what would you, advice would you give, I guess, to your fellow SCMers if you have any? This is uh, it's a great question. And um, the answer has already been kind of um, shared by the other participants. Um, SCM is so unique in how it's um, ecumenical. When I was going through undergrad, uh, the only um, choices that I had available were like organizations like Campus Crusades, um, more uh, right-wing evangelical type uh, Christian organizations that you know I really wanted to have nothing to do with. Um, and I, so I really appreciate how uh, SCM makes social justice a really important cornerstone of how we approach our faith, probably makes it like the most important lens. Um, and it really dives into how personally I feel called to take the book of James very seriously. And when I was looking at SCM on the website and checking out the mission and principles, um, I saw the, the phrase liberation theology and that like immediately jumped right out at me. Um, it, it just speaks to how, um, I guess, socially or politically aware uh, SCM is um, as a movement uh, versus just an organization um, being ecumenical, but having the awareness to uh, act locally within a, con within a context of your specific environment um, and not feeling this like impulse to convert and evangelize 
uh, is in the you know <laughs> traditional um, or alternate way of being a Christian. Thank you, Elliot. So as as we knew it would, time has flown by, um, and I gonna suggest that we do one last lightning round um, where I'm gonna ask everyone to share you know what's something that's happening in the world today that gives you hope um, so Lois uh, the work on climate change the uh, work of the indigenous people in reclaiming their language and their culture and their identity and I've been working hard on trying to activate people on a guaranteed livable income so those are three things that, that give me hope. Yes. Are you going to ask Joy question too? Yes, Joy. Oh, joy? Oh, you know. um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I was also going to ask something that gives you joy. Um, I think we're, we'll do that in the small groups. <laughs> All right. Well, I just have to say I have six great grandchildren. And what gives me the greatest joy is the two-year-old who never said a word, and then suddenly she said to me, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me a bad point. Uh, lovely. So, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a fun name to have, I can tell you. Um, but anyway, I, uh, you know, most of my uh, action, faith in action these days is around faith uh, around climate change, ecological justice, indigenous peoples, and how that all comes together. I've just been in a three-day pilgrimage for peace and justice in the Arctic with religious and indigenous leaders, virtually, of course. Uh, and that gives me hope. Um, but also um, youth climate strike, uh, uh, Fridays for Future, young people taking government to court for inaction on climate change, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit is definitely poured out and alive and kicking, you know, kicking our butts to get into, into a new way of living, a new understanding for who we as a human species are on this planet. And, um, and I'm very hopeful. Uh, in the midst of a pandemic, I'm hopeful because it's given us time to reflect differently. And it's, it may change everything. Hopefully we have a, a just and resilient recovery. Thank you. And even thinking about that gives me joy. <laughs> yes. I think my grandkids also. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Hyren. Mm -hmm. well, you know, this kind of meeting gives me hope um, that, that we are not alone, that we are connected. And the, uh, the things that uh, also ironically uh, gives me hope is during this pandemic, you know, things that were overlooked, marginalized, uh, invisible issues, including uh, intersectional you know, racism being so obviously exposed and visualized. Therefore, we need to address and, and, and make it better. I think that gives me hope um, that we are not dormant, we are not uh, gonna just ignore, um, but we need to make this, you know, almost open uh, so that we need to uh, address it. So those, those things are, give me hope. And I think our, uh, you know, we are all getting old in a way that uh, I, I find young people um, really gives me hope as well. Thank you. And finally, Elliot. Uh, I'll just comment a bit about, I guess, uh, the trans rights. I think I've seen a lot of um, response from trans individuals, prominent individuals and groups organizing is pretty hard uh, against rolling back of rights or being challenged in public debate. So I have a lot of hope that, you know, the recent string of de the defeats aren't permanent. Um, I'm, this is not to say that I take any of the progress for granted, um, but I do think the attitudes have been changing in society for a long, long time. Um, and especially in religious contexts, and so I think that um, in the long run, uh, uh, we will win out. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Spirits Rising. You can watch us on YouTube or listen to us at anchor.fm, Spotify, 
Google Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Our thanks to the Student Christian Movement for supporting this project, and especially to the SCM York Chapter's partnership with St. Theodore of Canterbury Anglican Church and the Diocese of Toronto's REACH grant.